I'm Sue Brown. I'm a potter. I live in Tullabudgera Valley, South East Queensland. My pottery is beautifully placed right on the banks of Tullabudgera Creek. I first became interested in pottery because I like pots and I wanted to have them in my life and use them. But I was too poor. I was a single mother. So I thought I had to learn to make them and that's what I did. I started to make pot learn to make pottery and then I thought, oh, I can make a bit of a living from these. Oh, foolish, silly me. Potters are very poor people. But um, I did. I used to do a market store and uh, just make some nice pots. And over the years, I've made nicer and nicer pots. And I love using pottery. When I was turning 60, I decided uh, I had to go and hug the biggest rock that I knew. So I went out, hired a camper van ended up at Uluru and just hugged that big rock and thought oh gee I'm 60 now I can yes yeah, I can still go on and live and live a fruitful life. When I came back I decided I had to get back out there so I bought a little caravan. I set off in 2010 on a journey of discovery. We pulled into a little community west of Alice Springs, Wallace Rock Hole, to spend a couple of days. Wallace Rock Hole is a small Aranda Aboriginal community, 120 k's west of Alice Springs, and was originally part of the Hermansburg Lutheran Mission. There are currently around 80 people living there. Wandering through their art centre, I was fascinated to see three kilns, two big ones and one little tiny kiln. I couldn't believe it because there were no pots anywhere in the art centre. Years ago a slip casting venture had been started out there and had failed. I had been teaching pottery all of my adult life and I know that slip cast work is very frail, fragile and can break really easy. That They needed tough pottery, they needed to have work that was solid, good solid pottery. I suggested that maybe I would be interested in coming back and teaching them how to make pots and how to use the kilns. I came back to Queensland and gathered a lot of stuff together, uh, materials and equipment and books for the pottery out there. With my artist friend who came out with me on the first journey, we headed off. It takes me five days of solid driving to drive out to Wallace Rock Hole, towing my caravan. When Lindy and I rolled into the community, little did we know the changes that had happened while we were away. Um, intervention had actually closed the supermarket, which was a big focal point in this community. And the art centre, where we had thought that we would actually be setting the pottery up, had now taken over uh, the basic items and had become, I guess, like a little general store. It had food and things for sale where we were going to put the pottery. The kilns were still in the art centre. So what we ended up doing was we opened up our little pottery in the loading bay of the old supermarket. We set up the pottery, pulled up the roller door and we were just inundated. The first couple of weeks was just absolutely amazing. I suddenly realised that uh, this was not going to be a three year program, this was going to take a long time and also it was the funding for it was going to be more than what I could provide. I started to uh, look around for different ways that I could fund this and I came across Possible. It's a uh, crowdfunding website. I now use Possible to crowdfund the Wallace Rock Hole Pottery. This is the uh, seventh year that uh, Sue's been visiting Wallace Rock Hole and uh, the changes that we've seen over the years is uh, from uh, a few people sort of having a bit of interest in the clay to quite a few people in the community. My name is uh, Ken Porter, um, resident of Wallace Rock Hole. I've uh, been living here for about 30 years. My wife, Glennis, who's just recently passed away, was one of the uh, traditional owners uh, of uh, this area here. 
my position today at uh, Wallace Rock Hole is the uh, tourist park uh, come store manager and also uh, heavily involved in the uh, pottery industry. My wife uh, got very involved in the pottery. Um, decorating, I was making, Glennis was decorating. Uh, we have two or three other girls that are uh, making pots. Uh, and I suppose we've established a small cottage industry these days. Uh, we've got a contract with uh, Voyages down at Ayers Rock. We have a shop, Yuban Arbor in Alice Springs, that's taking our products. And we may have another one coming online in Sydney very soon. Glennis's favourite work, um, as in, in the art on the pottery, was uh, honey ants. Uh, she loved to do honey ants and also the little geckos, the lizards. Uh, that was her favourite and uh, the uh, honey ants was part of uh, Glennis' uh, Dreamtime story also. Before Glennis passed away uh, late last year, um, one of her wishes was that I actually keep this pottery going. Uh, she looked at the pottery as an important part of the community, creating employment income uh, for her family. We've got about five or six people directly involved in the pottery, uh, getting an income. Some of the girls that work for me are also in there doing the painting. Uh, I'm making a lot of the stuff and the girls are decorating the pots. Each year the community looks forward to uh, Sue's visit around about this time of the year. Sue arrives in uh, June, July and usually stays here until about September. They really look forward to her visit and uh, keeping the pottery going. She's been a real inspiration to the community. She's got the school children involved. She runs little classes with the school kids and it's creating, uh, it's created a whole new interest. <laughs> I love doing what I do out in Wallace Rock Hole in the centre of Australia. I feel so rich and wealthy from doing it. I don't get any money, but I've, it's giving me the most amazing, warm feeling in my heart. I'll hitch up my van and off I go each year. I'll do it as long as I possibly can. <laughs>